here. The nice little buzz of activity. So we got 45 minutes uh, with uh, Craig Forsberg. Uh, he'll share a little bit about himself. Uh, we're going to dive into the topic of sulfur in the form of MSM, DMSO. If you know what that is, you, hey, you're in the right place. Good. And if you do know what it is, then you're going to learn even more about it. Uh, Craig is quite an expert on this topic, as well as many, many other topics related to health. And uh, we've been exploring doing some classes together. So I'm really excited to have uh, Craig here. And uh, yeah, I don't want to take any more of his time away. So we'll just kind of pass it right over to you, Craig. Thank you very much. Yeah, Bob. thank you. Uh, thanks very much for the opportunity today. It's uh, nice to come in and present. I've been uh, teaching classes off and on for about 10 or 12 years now, uh, mostly on medical cannabis. Uh, but DMSO is kind of a, a bit of an offshoot of that. Sorry? Okay, I will talk louder and maybe a little bit slower. <laughs> okay, so my name is Craig. I've been teaching classes on uh, various uh, health-related topics for a number of years now. Um, initially, medical cannabis, DMSO, kind of fell in with that, uh, and really just comes down to diet and nutrition, as you know, we learned in the last course as well. Uh, so I'm a military vet. Uh, I did a number of years there. After the military, I wound up as a technology architect and consultant for a lot of great big companies doing uh, far too many things. And I managed to get a lot of injuries. I managed to get on a lot of medications. And uh, it took me 30 years to get on a number of medications, but it took me six weeks to get off. And I also lost 75 pounds. Uh, they blamed it on an allergic reaction to arthritis and pain meds, which is what got me changing into a different modality for healthcare. So, uh, yeah, so I've been working in the, uh, the industry here for about eight or 10 years now. I've been developing products for different dispensaries around the country, and it's kind of a fun thing. But uh, they tend to charge too much, so I teach people how to make these things on their own. Uh, this is a prime example of that. This is a fantastic product. <laughs> uh, it, it's readily available. You can get it in many health food stores. Uh, you can get it online quite easily. Um, now, here's a quick question. How many people here have ever heard of DMSO? Oh, my goodness. We've got people that know it. This is fantastic because 99 out of 100 doctors have never heard of it, <laughs> which is kind of a funny thing. And all the books always say when you start trying a new modality of treatment, you should talk to your doctor about it. When you bring this up with your doctor, bring a book with you. <laughs> There's several books. Uh, oh, we were going to get a couple. There's a couple up at the front here uh, that are really great. So anyway, without too much notice, we will carry along here. For those that don't know, uh, I'll try to keep the, the screen a bit clear. There's not too much stuff on the screen that you really need to know. I'm going to talk about this, and we'll hand out uh, uh, slides later on as well, or a cheat sheet. Um, all I'm trying to do is get to the uh, the really important stuff here. So what we want to do is touch on a couple of different things. Uh, DMSO has some really great uh, capabilities. It, it's a colorless liquid compound. It's an organic sulfur compound extracted from trees. The reason it's classified as organic is because you cannot create it in a lab. <laughs> this is a byproduct of the pulp and paper industry. <laughs> it was discovered in the 1800s. Uh, and what they found there is that if they got splashed by this vat of liquid that was off to the side, that the paint in their hands would disappear for a period of time. <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting thing. So that was the 1880s. Uh, around the 1920s, 1930s, they decided to try to turn it into a commercial product. So that was what pine sol was <laughs> when it first first came out. It's a pine-based solvent. Uh, pine sol is now a pile of chemicals, and DMSO uh, at pharmaceutical strength at 99.995% is used as a pharmaceutical solvent. So uh, if you had, say, a transdermal pain patch or a transdermal smoking aid, DMSO is what gives it the capabilities to, uh, to go through your skin. Does that make a bit of sense? I know some of these topics are a bit funny if you've never heard these before. But uh, so we have a, I got a couple of notes here. I just keep cheating on them. So this is, right now it's used in, number, in the treatment of a number of medical conditions, arthritis, interstitial cystitis. Uh, certain skin conditions, that type of thing. Uh, it's also, because it's such a great solvent, you can mix compounds with it, and they penetrate to areas that they would not normally penetrate. Um, when you uh, put DMSO, one of the tests for pure DMSO that's not been sanitized, you can take one drop of it, put it on the top of your foot, and two to three seconds later, you can taste the garlic odor in your, in your mouth. <laughs> so it's faster than your blood can flow. So what it does is it goes into a, a thing called your interstitial organ, has anybody heard about that? No? <laughs> oh, excellent. You have one. So uh, depending on the book that you read, it's either the second largest or the largest organ in the body. Uh, by weight and by volume, it's there's more to it than the skin. And it was only discovered in the uh, 19, I guess 2018 was uh, was when it first came out as a, 
uh, something to read about. So what you'll find when you read the DMSO books, they all talk about how DMSO penetrates really deep and it can carry compounds really deep into the skin, but it doesn't say how or why. <laughs> so the reason it does is it goes into the lymphatic system and uh, the interstitial organ is what your lymphatic system drains into. So really what we're talking is we could take a couple of drops of DMSO, put a compound in that, and it's everywhere in the human body in a few seconds. So uh, from a toxicity perspective, we're going to touch on some of these in a little bit more as well. There we go. Organic cannot be created in the lab. A byproduct of the pulp and paper industry, it's tree juice. When you cut a tree down, you fill a liquid on top. That's it. It's been refined and distilled. There's one company in North America that, uh, that creates this stuff. Uh, the Gaylord Chemical Company somewhere in Florida. Uh, the toxicity profile for this stuff is, uh, oh, I've got it right here. If you were a mouse, you'd have to ingest 512 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So, you know, if you weigh, yes? Yes and yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get to, to all this stuff. So the, the safety profile is important, though. The, the important thing to know about DMSO on its own, uh, pure, uh, like here, it's as toxic as water. <laughs> But when you mix it with something else, because of the way that it penetrates in, it's as toxic as whatever you mix it with. So if you had insect repellent on you prior to putting that on your skin, it would take that insect repellent and put it into your lymphatic system. So you want to make sure the area is very clean before you apply it topically. Yes, sir. How much difference is maybe sort of the birch syrup? Yeah, so. um, well, it, it comes out differently. <laughs> so it, it's a different part of the tree, but... It, 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 I don't think you can overdose on, on maple syrup, like 512 milligrams per kilogram. I think I've had that with breakfast just the other day. <laughs> Chemically, it's a different thing, yeah. So uh, that, I'm not sure. I've never had that question before, so I can look it up. But, you know, you cut a tree down, there's all the goop on the top. That's the stuff that actually comes out. And the pulp and paper industry is where they can concentrate that enough. <laughs> Sugar, the other one's like Almost a salt. A lot of these things tend to be, yeah, not the same substance at all, but, you know, a DMSO comes from all trees, not just uh, from one or two trees. To my knowledge, like, it could be a little bit different from that. Uh, one, other slight sa one other safety perspective on this, when you get pure pharmaceutical grade DMSO, 99.995%, the freezing point is plus 18.6 Celsius. So this will turn into a crystal stored in a cool room. <laughs> but when you take uh, DMSO and mix it with, it just has to be 2 or 3% liquid, and that's what we're going to do here in a few minutes. We're going to put some DMSO in this. We're going to add some aloe vera to that. Well, we're going to take it from a 99.995% solution down to about a 50% solution, and then we're going to pass this jar around so you can feel the exothermic reaction. So what happens is DMSO on its own, pure DMSO, freezes at 18.6 Celsius. When we mix it with aloe vera, distilled water, just a little bit, uh, there's a mild exothermic reaction. The bottle will heat up like a light bulb for a couple of minutes. The freezing point then changes to minus 20 Celsius. And this is used to uh, preserve organs for transplant because we can freeze them to minus 10 and there's no ice crystal formation in them. So, you know, as you can see, we've got a pretty, pretty good, our body gets along with it very nicely, if that makes sense. Uh, sulfur is the eighth most common compound in the human body and not because it's in any one chunk, but it's in everything in the body. So we have a very high affinity for it. Uh, as we were talking about in the last uh, presentation, we are talking about how... Uh, Food has changed. Farming has changed. This used to be in our food. Uh, if you go to the beach, like you go to any of the coasts, you can smell that organic, sulfury, garlicky odor. That's the organic sulfur process in life cycle. It evaporates, comes back down as rain. Yes, ma'am. Sorry? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I've got hearing aids in it. <laughs> Is it similar to sulfur? I'm not sure what sulfur effect is. Oh, uh, partially, yeah, it would be similar to that, yeah. But I have had people ask if it's similar to sulfur drugs before, and sulfur drugs are their drugs. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it would be a version of that, but this is dramatically more concentrated. Yeah. Now, I wonder. Oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. So the question was, is sulforaphane kind of similar, which is a compound in broccoli and uh, onions and stuff like this? And yes, it's related, but it's not nearly as concentrated as this. You'd have to <laughs> ingest several pounds of it every day to, to get a little bit in. So this is a, a little bit uh, thicker than that. Uh, and, and also, just for the record, this is a, a very quick quick course. We've got a, a fair bit of things in here. 
No. <laughs> it, it's just recording for the... Uh... Oh, there, oh. <laughs> Oh. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. What I'm going to get into now is a really quick demo. We're going to put DMSO into this jar. I'm going to dilute it. We'll just pass it around just so you can feel the exothermic reaction. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear this or feel this the first time, they get kind of terrified and drop it like, oh, my God, it's going to blow up. But uh, it doesn't blow up. <laughs> oh, which is the jar that I was going to use for this sample. We'll use this one. Um, so, no, they're all sealed. So one of the things about DMSO, because it's uh, it's organic, it cannot be patented, there is no best brand for it. <laughs> so the best thing you want to find is something that's 99.995% pharmaceutical grade, and then work from there. Uh, if you go to a health food store, the way they will have it labeled will be 100% uh, DMSO, but it includes 99.995% pharmaceutical grade DMSO combined with 10% distilled water. <laughs> so that's to take away this uh, the exothermic reaction, so you don't get too concerned when that happens. My own personal perspective, I would suggest getting the 100% or 99.5% stuff and then modify that from there. You can always make it weaker. And uh, when you get some of the books, we're going to touch on the books here in a little bit, but uh, the books will give you different methodologies and different uh, uh, strengths to use. Uh, for example, if you take pure DMSO and put it on your face, there's a pretty good chance you'll experience like, a better reaction to that. But we can dilute it down to 35% DMSO and 65% distilled water, and then there's no problem with, with itch. Or, and that's the, the reaction will be a mild itch sensation or maybe a slight discoloration. Okay, so usually we have measuring instruments. I do not have those today, so we're just going to do this. Uh, about double. Sorry. Horse. Horse grade is the same thing. I feel the uh, the reaction and just pass the jar along. You can feel it uh, mildly starting to heat up now. This this will last one to two minutes. And then the freezing point, as I said, changes from about plus 20 to minus 20 Celsius. And uh, if anybody is interested, just to see what it's like, this is a DMSO gel. Uh, just uh, put a little bit on a spoon and stick it on your wrist and rub your wrist together. And that way you'll get a bit of a feel for the, the heating sensation that happens from it. Oh. I heard with the DMSO that you... No, uh, once you put the MSO on your skin, you should never cover it up while it's still wet. Uh, there's several reasons here. I'll let you let's start and go on with that. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because of the transdermal capabilities of DMSO. If you were to put, uh, say, it, like put it on your arm and you put a T-shirt over top, in theory, wet DMSO could pull the color from your T-shirt into your skin. <laughs> so when we talk about these transdermal things, it's you know not just insect repellent, but it could be any sort of color. It's not my laptop. I have no idea what these things are doing. <laughs> oh. Is it still warm? Yeah. Okay, who hasn't felt this yet? Oh, yeah. So while that's passing around, if uh, does anybody have any questions on the cupboard so far? Yes, ma'am? <laughs> so, well, uh, I had to kind of, there are dozens and dozens of books written on DMSO. There is one medical textbook that's about this big, and that's the basis of every other book. But some of the premises of using this, because of it's a pharmaceutical solvent, when you look through the books on this stuff, you'll find recipes that'll uh, help dissolve things like cataracts <laughs> and clots. Uh, from an anecdotal perspective, one of my neighbors a couple of years ago, uh, 3.30 in the morning, drove herself to the hospital with kidney stones. Uh, the next day, she came to see me and said, yeah, they said I have kidney stones. I'm going into the hospital on Tuesday, and they'll zap them for me. Uh, is there anything else we can do? And I said, well, we could try this. I have a recipe for kidney stone uh, dissolvement. One teaspoon of DMSO and a small glass of juice. Uh, she drank that on Friday. She drank it again on Saturday. Tuesday, she went to the hospital. There was no trace of kidney stones left in her body. So, yeah, that was a CT scan. Uh, <laughs> 
So that was kind of fun. Some of the premises of these books, uh, my favorite book on the topic is called VMSO and Trauma and Disease. It was written by uh, two doctors who ran a clinic in Oregon for a number of years. Uh, one of them was also the head of surgery for Harvard University for a number of years. Uh, his premise is that DMSO should be carried in every emergency room and every ambulance out there because of its potent clot busting capabilities. A DMSO in Trauma and Disease was written by Dr. Stanley Jacob and Dr. Delator for his first name. Uh, I've got the ISBN link for the book coming up. Oh, uh, one other. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Um, I understood, probably incorrectly, that MSM is the powder form of DMSO. Have you heard that, or could you clarify that? MSM is a metabolite of DMSO. Uh, you cannot make MSM without DMSO. Okay, so, so should I just go to the DMSO side of things because I'm currently taking. MSM for some arthritic fingers that type for a living. I understand totally. Mm -hmm. ah. So, so uh, MSO would be better. Uh, it's different then. And then some of the recipes actually call to combine the two of them. So you get a bit of an extra shot of stuff. So you could make it 115% DMSO by adding MSM to it. <laughs> sort of. Uh, okay. So the question was, is MSM and DMSO related? And for those of you that aren't familiar with MSM, it's a powdered format. That's quite similar to DMSO. It's uh, actually extracted from DMSO. Uh, if you go to Costco and you get joint supplements, they'll usually say uh, glucosamine, chondroitin, and MSM. Uh, of those three, it's my opinion that MSM is the most important of the whole group. And MSM can be purchased at a lot of drugstores. And if you go to the States, they have a lot of these stores that will sell veterinary supplies. Uh, we had one not too far from us in Washington State a few years ago, and they had MSM on the shelf. MSM here had a picture of a horse on it. The MSM here had a picture of a human on it. The horse stuff cost $5. The one with the human on it was $45, and they both contained 100% MSM. So, so these are not patentable. Once you know how to read a label, it, it gets a lot less expensive, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, one other little uh, side point about the MSO. If you were to take a semen sample, say you had a cow here, and you wanted to send the sample to Australia to impregnate a cow, you would put that sample directly into DMSO and the sample remains viable for over 20 years. So, you know, we have, <laughs> we have an affinity for this stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, veterinarians tend to know DMSO quite well and they've been using it for 60 or 70 years now. <laughs> um, we, uh, we tend to put, no, <laughs> I take DMSO and I squirt it in his water dish. We, our dog is 14 years old. He's a 75 pound Labradoodle and he's doing quite well. <laughs> yeah, I put a, a, just a dropper full. Uh, I use about a teaspoonful every week or two. Oh, no, uh, every week or two, I put a teaspoonful in his water dish. Yeah. Well, I have another question. Did I pause on around that? Oh, so, right Oh, preventatively. So if my dog's not that old yet, but he's, a, he's really hard on himself. I still do it. Uh, okay, so the question was, uh, if we have arthritic pets, can we do anything with DMSO to help them out? And the, the answer to that is I put a tablespoon of DMSO in our dog's water dish every week or two. Uh, and the next question to that was, would we do it if he was healthy? And my perspective on a lot of these things is if we can keep animals and ourselves healthier for longer, it's easier to stay healthier than it is to try to get healthier, <laughs> you know, so you can wait until you're really, really sick and then try to crawl your way out of that or try not to get sick at all. <laughs> That's probably my perspective on stuff. Yes, ma'am. Talking about um, the advice of having this in every ambulance, could you say for clot? Oh. It's a very potent clot buster and stroke buster. <laughs> so, uh, uh, another anecdotal story. Uh, the question was, uh, you know, about using this for, for clots. Why would we use it for clots? One of our neighbors came over for a visit a couple of years ago, and he said, oh, do you want a glass of wine? He goes, oh, I can't. I have this big gout spot on my wrist. And it looked like a golf ball was crawling out of his wrist. Uh, I took a roller bottle, and here's how I tend to use it. Myself, personally, this is just a DMSO roller bottle with a few other compounds in it. I took this, I smeared it on his gout spot, and two minutes later, it was gone. So it's... It disappears quickly. He now ingests it. He takes liquid DMSO every couple of weeks or MSM in a powder, uh, a powdered format. 
The difference between the DMSO and the MSM when you ingest it, uh, DMSO has a smite flake smell. You may have noticed from the stuff floating around here. MSM does not have that same smell. But one of the things that that slight garlic smell does is it repels ticks. <laughs> so if you live in tick country, this is a nice thing to have as well. But you can just put a couple of drops on topically on pets. But one of the other side effects that it will do, if the tick does happen to latch on, this will disrupt their life cycle. So uh, when we took our dog through Kejum Kujik Park last year, we found dead ticks on them. <laughs> Looked like little shriveled up corn kernels. But uh, yeah, it's really quite, quite a neat thing. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, question? Oh, does it have, can it like heal your wounds like Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, that's one of the things that they use it for quite heavily is uh, as healing skin conditions. Uh, and one of the neat things that you can do, uh, sorry, the question there was, uh, can DMSO be used on things like eczema and skin conditions? And the answer is yes. We've got uh, several things in here. Uh, what I tend to tell people when they ask me if DMSO can be used to try this or to help heal that, I tend to say, the worst thing you can do is nothing. <laughs> so you might as well try it, right? I mean, if it doesn't work, well, you're no further behind than you were before. Uh, there is nothing harmful that can come out of using DMSO. Yes, ma'am. This is like the DMSO and frankincense like they were making, but I also heard that you could not mix iodine with your DMSO, but that you should wait and put the DMSO first, then the iodine. Uh, so is there certain things you don't want to combine? My roller bottle, this includes DMSO. Uh, I've diluted it with colloidal silver because I use that to try to keep the skin a little bit cleaner. There's iodine and peroxide in here as well. Uh, a bit of boron, <laughs> uh, frankincense. Yeah, uh, you can put a lot of things in there. All it really does is drive them deeper into the body. The only thing you really want to make sure is whatever you put into DMSO, if you're going to use it topically or internally, make sure it's food safe. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be putting in something that you would not ingest into DMSO and putting it topically. Uh, Whatever you put on you will get in you <laughs> very quickly. So having said that, if you were to infuse cannabinoids into DMSO, this is the only way that you can have a topical and experience a psychotropic effect from it. So be very careful with that. Uh, uh, there's more courses on it, of course. <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. It, it breaks up clots almost on contact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so by ingesting it briefly, if you were calling the ambulance because you were experiencing a heart attack or a stroke, uh, they used to say take a, a, a children's aspirin under your tongue, and that's better than nothing. But if you have DMSO, have a quick drink really fast. <laughs> so just straight out of that bottle. Yeah, uh, the toxic limit for this, you'd have to ingest uh, uh, was it 512 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So basically half your body weight you'd have to ingest before you get to a lethal dose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it does awesome. Yes, yeah. So uh, uh, the question was, would this work for uh, uh, for cataracts? So when you get a cataract, the cataract is a buildup of heavy metal proteins in the back of the eye. Uh, it tends to get to smokers more than non-smokers, but everybody gets them. What happens is it's just uh, some proteins and things start to accumulate in the proteins. When we take a DMSO eye drop, it dissolves the proteins <laughs> and releases the metals and stuff to be expelled through uh, through sweat, urine, and feces. Uh, you can do it straight, but what the, in the books, the way they suggest it, and the first time I read about this was somebody who was a marathon runner, and he would take a tablespoon and mix it in a four-ounce glass of uh, juice and drink that slowly three to four hours. For eyes, I tend to dilute to about 40%. Uh, you'll find, uh, okay, uh, the question was, how do we use this for eyes? So what I would do with DMSO then is I dilute it down to about 40%, and then I put it in the eyes. Uh, the reason for that is it'll sting like a bugger <laughs> for about 40 seconds, and then it feels actually quite refreshed. But the first time you try it, it'll sting. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, Yes. Yes, you should see. Yeah, exactly. It's freaky, isn't it? You got nothing to lose but try it. Try it and go back and find out you don't need surgery. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, uh, kidney stones. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's the same thing. If you ingest this stuff regularly, maybe you don't have to go to the hospital for kidney stones for cataract surgery <laughs> or stroke. Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. Uh, they do sell it here. Um, I, I get it online. There's a company in Ottawa called DMSO Canada, uh, but uh, I, I get DMSO Canada. Yeah, and, and I get gallons at a time. I've been making things and selling them for a number of years now. <laughs> Uh, just for the record as well, if you dissolve something in DMSO, it's also water soluble once you're done. So if it's something that's normally in oil, uh, you can dissolve it in DMSO and put it in water. Yes, ma'am. If I take that stuff and put it on my skin, what's in it besides the DMSO? This one? That's DMSO. <laughs> what is it? I mean, DMSO helps absorb stuff, but what am I doing? Oh, it, it, <laughs> you were in absorbing sulfur. Uh, it, it's yeah, pure organic sulfur. Yeah. It's the eighth most common compound in the body. If you were going to take something that would interact with with DMSO, it would interact with you now before taking more DMSO. <laughs> You've already got some in, in you to an extent. Oh yes, ma'am. That I'm not, it's a little specific, but I'm sure that if I look through some books, I could find the answer for you. <laughs> but uh, like I was saying, most of the times we tend to try this uh, first as opposed to, you know, but but with somebody who has a sore throat, for example, uh, we use DMSO, just put DMSO topically, it can help reduce the pain of a sore throat <laughs> because it penetrates. Uh, well, the gel might work for that. I would also probably... If I was going to put another compound in it, I would probably mix it with some water and gargle with it <laughs> and drink with it. You're trying to get it as close to the injured uh, area as possible, right? And, and it does dissolve through a lot of stuff. So the closest we can, closer we can get to it, the better off we are. Uh, sorry, the question there was, uh, would this work for thyroid? And that's a good question. I have absolutely no idea, but I know how we could use it to help get medications to reach closer to where the thyroid is. <laughs> so that, that, that's a little specialized question, but I'm sure we could find an answer somewhere. Me? I am not. <laughs> I am not. Uh, my background, uh, when I was in the military, my first seven years, I was with an Army medical unit, so I was ambulance crew. Uh, after that, I was a naval engineer. Uh, then I got into technology management, and I spent 20 years with Hewlett Packard and Canadian Pacific and stuff. And then I was medically retired. Uh, I was told to get a quieter lifestyle and put my affairs in order. So we wound up moving to the middle of nowhere and just waiting for the clock to end. And I got a lot better. <laughs> I couldn't stand this long uh, 10 years ago. Uh, my walking, I, I'd go 500 feet, and that was pretty much as far as I could go. Uh, the last couple of years, I've been doing things like search and rescue. Uh, yeah, it, it's this is, I feel more like I did 30 years ago than I did look, feel like I, when I was doing this 10 years ago. But I've been a technology researcher for a long time, and all of a sudden, I switched to this. It's like, goodness gracious, there's a lot to learn. <laughs> Uh, daily, I tend to take MSM every second day, and then I have the DMSO in roller format, so I tend to use this uh, more topically. But if we're going towards tick country, then I start taking it more. <laughs> That's a, a teaspoon twice a week is my uh, my band aid solution or my my prophylaxis uh, my prophylaxis recipe. <laughs> um, well. My wife has some vascular issues, and when she starts feeling a little bit of pain uh, in that area, then she has a drink. So she waits till she thinks she needs it. Yeah, exactly. So if you feel something's not working quite right, have some. Uh, there is no lethal dose. Just just offhand, like I was mentioning the lethal dose a minute ago, it's 512 milligrams per kilogram. What's the Health Canada lethal dose for THC? So this is an interesting. I like usually bringing this one up because I usually get looks funny looks out of this. Okay, Health Canada's uh, lethal dose of THC, you'd have to ingest 1,500 kilograms in 15 minutes to reach a lethal dose of THC. Uh, they do not have a lethal dose limit for CBD, so you can ingest more than a Volkswagen's worth in 15 minutes and be absolutely fine. So uh, I just thought I'd toss that in as a little aside. <laughs> yes, please. So uh, where did the, the jar end up getting heated? Oh, there we go. What's the difference between the... And the gel. Well, the gel has a, a compound in it called carbamine, 
but makes it thicker. So it's still pure. I'm not sure exactly what the purity level of this stuff is, but it should be, yeah, carbomer. It's just a, a naturally occurring compound. For this much, you'd put like one thirty second of a teaspoon in and stir it up, and it thickens right up. So, yes, ma'am. So with the roller, I understand, okay, but if I'm putting something on and I'm touching it to rub it in, wow. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so what it says in the... So uh, the, the question was, uh, how does it know where to go once you put it on? And uh, what do you do about your hands? So according to the books, what you do with it is if you're putting stuff on, you should always wash your hands afterwards. And then in brackets, it says, unless you're applying it to your hands. <laughs> so so that's kind of the answer for that. Put it on. <laughs> yeah, I've already mixed it up. So, uh, so what Rosemary is going to do here, we've got this VMSO. We've mixed about 50% with aloe vera. We've got a couple of sample bottles here. So we're going to fill those up and uh, people can grab a sample bottle if they'd like to take it home and try it out. Uh, just uh, there's not enough room for a label on this, but know that it's about 50% VMSO and it's totally edible. <laughs> there's nothing in there besides pure DMSO and aloe vera. Yes, ma'am. This is definitely something I would suggest for you. Uh, the question was, how does this work for pain management? Uh, we have somebody who had some major injuries uh, from a hiking incident. So what I would be doing with this, I would have something like my roller bottle in my pocket. Uh, what I do with my roller bottle is I apply it to pain points as soon as I feel a twinge. Uh, my ultimate goal is to try get it to stop before the pain becomes too too dominant. So that's why I use the MSM as well. So I take the MSM internally. Uh, if the pain gets a bit high, then I have a DMSO drink. Uh, the DMSO gel uh, and the roller, I put that on as required. So like when I'm hiking, my DMSO roller's in my pocket. If I hurt something, I stop and I smear it around. Uh, just for the record, some of the different books that you can read on DMSO will have a lot of different recipes in them. One of them includes a recipe for how to uh, deal with snake bite. If you were to be bit by a rattlesnake in the middle of the desert, there's a protocol using DMSO if you don't have antivenin close by. Uh, the protocol for search and rescue, if you got bit by a snake out in the middle of nowhere, is find a place to put water under pressure for 15 minutes and then get immediately to a hospital. So if you're four hours from pavement and no warning water, what do you do? Sort of nudge, smile and nod, right? So look after yourself. <laughs> find a way to, to, to look after this before you really need to. Yes, sir. Uh, not yet, but they will be soon. But they're pretty easy to. Yeah, yeah. The gel is really good for large areas. I use gel myself. I you know for smearing on back and stuff because you know for big areas the gel works good. For smaller areas the roller works good. Oh, yes, ma'am. It would be something I would certainly try. Uh, uh, the question was, uh, uh, somebody has some problem with some uh, accumulation of uh, fluids around their ankles. Would this help? That's a lymphatic issue, so it's not draining appropriately. This might be the thing that would help you. Uh, you might want to combine that with something like dry brushing, like just take a hairbrush and brush it over top of that. That helps to stimulate the lymphatic system as well. Uh, rebounding, just doing a little bit of bouncing will also help or a little trampoline and do a little little bit of bouncing could help keep things going as well. Uh, if you're fortunate to have some little nieces and nephews, there's a place called Flying Squirrel in East Calgary. It's a trampoline park that's massive. That will get your lymphatic system going as well as a few other things that maybe a doctor. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, so the question was, does DMSO work with uh, uh, neurological issues? There's uh, the medical textbook uh, that I'm going to suggest that people look up, look up uh, has uh, an entire chapter on using DMSO for neurological damage and repair. So yes. <laughs> yeah, the short answer is yes. Uh, I don't have all the details of it, but I, I know that there's a potential for it to help. Yeah, and and again, this stuff is really inexpensive, right? So, uh, like a, 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 I guess a two ounce bottle will cost you like sixty dollars, and that'll last a year. <laughs> uh, one more question: because it's drawing blood to the surface of the skin, 
So uh, it can cause a temperature change. The blood comes up so quickly. Uh, in one of the books, when I first got it, there was uh, a chapter in there on how to use DMSO to deal with uh, an ear infection. So my next door neighbor came over and he had an ear infection. I said, hey, this book says we can use this to treat it. Do you want to try it? And he goes, yes. Meanwhile, my wife and his wife are sitting there looking at the book. And as I'm taking this dropper out, I stick it in Richie's ear and the girls start giggling. And Trista reads out this chapter that says, it says that when you have an ear infection, your temperature in your inner ear could be 10 degrees lower than body temperature. DMSO will cause the blood to draw to that section so fast, it'll feel like it's on fire. And as she said that, Richie's eyes got big and he goes, oh my God, right here. <laughs> so 30 to 45 seconds, it'll sting like a bugger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't, don't, that's, yeah, that's pretty strong stuff. So the gel, but I find a lot of times the gel, they make it pure strength and that's a little too strong, <laughs> but because you can feel it, right? So you can dilute that a little bit with a little distilled water. Yeah, just, just a little. And we use distilled water because we want to make sure that it's pure because <laughs> of where it's going to go, right? Yes, ma'am. How about scarring? I have a really bad scarring my abdomen. You're drawing the blood there. So uh, one of the treatments uh, recommended for DMSO is for keloid scarring. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a scar, a raised scar, you can apply DMSO to it and it will flatten out. The, the appearance of the scar may still be there, but it won't be raised anymore. It'll be flat and look like almost normal skin. Yes, ma'am. So if I have a and I'm using this pain for this joint, how long does it take for not yeah, three to five minutes uh, once it's dry you can put stuff on it yeah so the question was how long can you uh, when you put it on how long do you have to leave it for and don't put anything on top of what you're covered up until it's dry uh, so like with my uh, my roller model when I put it on it rests on the surface a bit so it takes a bit longer to dry but you take your finger and slide it around a bit and it's gone in two minutes and the same thing with open wounds. Um, we use DMSO on OPDs as well. And um, so you don't want to put a Band-Aid on right away. You want it to absorb completely. So you're, you know, three to five to 10 minutes, let it absorb. And then you can put the Band-Aid on and then carry on with your day. Otherwise, the Band-Aid could dissolve. <laughs> so uh, uh, lots of Band-Aids are made out of plastic, right? So and, and DMSO doesn't like plastic. And that's why we're trying to use as much glass as possible. And oh. that's why it's well <laughs> I didn't get all the slides. I should put this one up really quick. The plastic balls. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So two years, uh, the question was, can we use DMSO directly on a pain point? Uh, this was specifically a dog's dew claws getting ripped off. So a few years ago, we had some guys pressure washing at our house uh, using a big fancy apparatus. Buddy walked under the machine and stripped a big chunk of scalpel with like three inches pulled back. It was quite horrible. Uh, we were 30 minutes from the hospital out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I took DMSO and we put DMSO directly on top uh, and then I put a bandit over top of it the next day you could barely see it <laughs> so you know all i can really say about this stuff is if you have an injury of some sort this you could do a lot worse than putting this on it <laughs> okay it's all it. yes yeah well absolutely so, fine it, it penetrates within seconds like it's three to five seconds and it penetrates through your lymphatic system so it's it's doing good stuff as soon as it touches <laughs> You could, in theory, put something in there that the dog doesn't like. <laughs> you know, like with cats, you can put something like Fellaway, a uh, pheromone that makes them not lick stuff. There's other things for dogs like bitter apple and stuff. You can put a drop of that in there as well. And Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And, you, and you might also notice the animal starting to, because he's getting the yeah. garlicky taste in the smoke, right? Yeah. Actually, right on. Yeah. 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 No, if it's leaking a lot of blood, you might want to stop that, but just weeping. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I put a big write up on the interstitial organ here. Uh, it's not exciting. It's a series of fluid filled sacs that go around all the uh, 
organs of the body? <laughs> you say it with, with like plastic. So if she wants to spray it on, most of the spray stuff is plastic. It depends on the plastic. So here is pure DMSO that's in plastic. Yeah. This is in PTFE medical grade. Oh. But if it comes from the shop in plastic, uh, I've actually spilled some on my glasses and watched the glasses dissolve. Oh. So it's a thermoset plastic that it will not be successful at, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, PTFE, uh, medical grade plastic, but this comes right from the factory in this stuff, but it also comes in glass bottles. Uh, if you were to get this over a glass bottle, the glass bottle would cost $20 more because, you know, glass is expensive. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Protocols and eczema. Eczema? I would use the roller bottle. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, and uh, yes, I, I would dilute it. I would dilute it down to about 30 to 40% to start with. Uh, I'd go up as, as needed. But you may find that the full strength, like with the gel here, it'll probably cause a weld. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Money yeah, absolutely. That's what I was doing with ours. <laughs> Yeah, so health harvest at our aloe, you know exactly where it's coming from. You're not worried about anything bad being in there as well. Okay, I think we're we're pretty much ready. What's the percentage of aloe that you put in? I use 50-50 in this particular one. Yeah. So it's 50%. So all of those samples we gave out are are they're edible. <laughs> they won't taste very nice, but they're edible. <laughs> um, that was all the bottles that we had. I do have one jar left here. I'd be happy to give that out if somebody would like it. <laughs> Okay, uh, the books and additional reading. I forgot to bring some books out from here, yes. but but there are some great books. Yeah, we've got a couple of books uh, in store. There's two that we have. Uh, Greg has some other uh, resources. Uh, there's his email right there. Want to follow up? Uh, we'll take a quick break, and I do have the handouts. Got to bring those down. Also. Fantastic. We we can email those out as well. So yeah, we can email as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll take a break, and then we'll get started again at uh, top of the hour. Denny Manzo will be presenting a free panel. Let's get the great job.